what shall I render unto him? We talked about last week the benefits of, of, of from the Lord. And today we want to talk about what shall I render unto him. Number one, verse one, we love him because he first loved us. I will love him. I will love him. That's one thing. You got to love him. You got to love him. And, and you, you love him because he first loved you. I, I, I will yield him my affection, the affection of my heart. You love in the heart. You know, that's why he, uh, people talk about uh, I, I've been heartbroken because they love someone and uh, they broke their heart. Broke their heart. So you got to love that uh, with God, with that affection from the heart. It's deep felt. Deep felt. And so because he had loved our soul out of the pit of corruption. We were in the pit of corruption, and he still loved us. And he loved us so much, when we were in the pit of corruption, he died for us while we were yet sinners. And, and so uh, he, he said, for all those benefits, you know I'm going to love him. I will. You got to will it. Sometimes you don't feel like loving, but I will love him because he loved me first in spite of. In spite of. And not only that, but I will call upon him. That, that, that's, 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 yes, that's in verse 2. As long as I live. <laughs> Listen, this, this is an expression uh, showing gratitude to God. I call on him. I thank you. And, and, and because I, I thank you, uh, as long as I live, I'll call on you. I call on you. And, and, and <laughs> And, and, and you show gratitude, when you show gratitude, you're thankful. I, we, we talked about that last week. When you show gratitude, you're thankful. And so I call on him, and yes, I, uh, as long as I live. Call on him when you're happy. Call on him when you're sad. Call on him when you're in the pit of depression. Call on him when you're heartbroken. Call on him when you're in sorrow. Call on him when you're being mistreated. Call on him when, you, when you're being uh, misunderstood. Call on him when you're sick. Call on him when you're well. Call on him. As long as you live. That's that's one of the things I will render unto the Lord. I, I talk to him <laughs> as long as I live. And then number seven, verse seven. Return unto thy rest, O my soul. I will rest in him. Not only will I love him, not only will I call upon him, but I will rest in him. God wants you to rest. That's, that's one of his desires, that you rest in him entirely. Entirely. Well, how do you rest in him? Well, well uh, Matthew 11, verses uh, 28 and 29. It says, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heaven laden, and I will give you 
rest. You see that? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. Now he said, you know, come unto me. If you, if you, you know, labor, just tired and heavy late, it's heavy on me. And I will give you rest. That's a promise. But he said, there's something you got to do. You got to take. You got to take it. Take my yoke upon you. When you yoke up on someone, you 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 walk where he walk. <laughs> when he move, you move. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, when he turn around, you turn around. <laughs> when he say no, you say no. <laughs> it, it says when when you yoke up on him, you do what he do, and then when you do what he do, you will learn of me. Some, some of the things that I uh, learned from uh, the late Dr. Gusta Booker is just hanging around him, being yoked up or, or being yoked to him. And then I learned not only him, but I learned his way. And then I learned uh, what to do in certain situations. Uh, because I was yoked up on him, uh, unto him. And if you yoke unto God, you learn of God, and you learn that uh, He's meek, He's gentle, He's gentle, and and lowly in heart, He cares. You know, He 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 He, he know who He is. <laughs> He know who he is. And, and so he, he he's meek and he cares. And, and listen, he shall, and you then you will shall you shall find rest unto your soul. But it won't happen until you take. You trying to find rest. I I said you'll find, you know, rest in him. But you got to yoke up on, up on him, you know, yoke un, uh, uh, unto him uh, and learn of him. You know, our problem is we we too busy to, to yoke uh, unto him and, and we can't stay still so we can't learn of him and wonder why we can't get rest. You know, rest, rest, this rest is not just sleep, but, but have peace in your life. You know, not, not, <laughs> and then, you know, when you say rest, then, uh, you know, you ain't going to have peace the rest of your life. You're going to have storms, you're going to have different things, but once, one, one, one thing for sure, if you learn of him, you understand that when he was in that ship and it, and it was a storm, he was sleep in the hinder. He was resting. And you can rest even though your storms are, storms are coming around you. You can still rest and have peace because you know God has, you know something because you learned something that God will take care. But not only that, verse 9, I will walk with him. We should plan all our details in daily life by walking with him. Yeah, walk with him. Walk with, him. walk with him and talk to him. You see, and 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 we should choose him as a constant companion. You got to choose him. 
you know, he ain't, he ain't gonna just walk with you. Just go up and walk with you. You know, he he he'll 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 know where you at. But he ain't gonna walk with you. That's different between knowing where you are and walking with you. And so uh, when you walk with him, he's a he's a constant companion, companion, companion. And then you can do something when you're walking with Christ. You hallelujah. You can do you can you can your your whole perspective will change. Because in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. But you got to choose him as a companion before you can walk by faith and not by sight. You don't see it, but you know God's got it. And it's already done. I had a, a heart surgery. I had heart surgery. And... When I got on the table to, to, uh, to have the heart surgery, the doctor said, Reverend, do you have anything to say before I put the gas on you? And he called me Reverend because my father introduced me to this doctor. And so... He knew my father was a pastor and he knew that I was a reverend. And so he he calls me reverend. He says, Reverend, do you have anything to say before I put gas on you to knock you out? And I looked at him and I said, it's already done. It's already done. You know, it, it wasn't no sense me praying 10 minutes, talking about Lord now, now Lord. We all heard that conversation in my room. How? So when I was on the table, uh, I had talked to the to the to the master in the room. I, I talked to the doctor. <laughs> I talked to the doctor in the room. You know, and and and, and matter of fact, he looked at my heart in the room. <laughs> He, he looked at my heart uh, before I got to the hospital, you see. And so when I was on the operating table, I looked at the doctor, but I looked at the doctor, and I said, it's already done. But you got to walk with him. And then you can walk by faith and not by sight. And not only that, I will speak for him. I will speak for him. When I got off that table, I said, I'm going to tell everybody. I will testify to what he has done for me. I will testify what he has done for my soul. I will testify. And the only way you can testify is you got to have a test. You see? And a lot of you had tests, but you won't testify. Tell somebody. My lips, follow, follow me, my lips shall speak his praise, and my tongue shall not be silent. My lips <laughs> will speak his praise. My lips will not speak the, the praise of the Texans, the praise of the Astros, or the praise of the Rockets. My lips are the praise of the Cowboys. My lips will speak of his praise. And my tongue shall not be silent. You, you can't help. <laughs> some people want you to be silent, and some people don't want you to tell your story. But 
you got to tell your story because all they see is your glory. But there's a story uh, before the glory. Oh! And not only that, this, this, I'm, I'm going to do some stuff. Look, look in verse 30, 13, I will take from him. <laughs> I will take the cup of salvation. I, I will, you know, now, now there are a lot of cups. Uh, uh, cups, uh, coffee cups, uh, there are uh, uh, cupcakes. Uh, there are all kind of cups. All kind of cups. And, and spiritually, there's cups of suffering. You got to suffer sometimes. You're going to, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you, you think you ain't going to suffer. Somebody told you a lie. You're going to suffer. If you love the Lord, you're going to suffer. And then there's the cup of blessings. What God has done for you. He did it. And he, 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 he's already done it. Uh, so that you can report it. So that you can talk about it. I will take the cup of salvation. And so there's, there's all kind of cups. But the cup of salvation. Cup of salvation. This means we are to take from him the things that he has shown us. He has shown us. Take the cup of salvation. Take, 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 take the Lord in your heart. And you'll see uh, the joy of the Lord. You'll see his goodness. Uh, you'll see uh, the mercy that he has given us and the compassion you see all that and you want to emulate those things in your life so you can share with others you 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 don't you don't get mercy and goodness and joy and compassion and other things of love and and patience from the lord and don't give them to somebody else I will take from him and give to somebody else. Not only that, I will offer to him. That's, that's in verse 17 and 18. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will pay my vows unto the Lord. The sacrifice of thanksgiving. Yeah. We, we're in November. And a lot of time in November we start thinking about Thanksgiving. We already, some of us already there. Because you already talking about Thanksgiving. Where, where we're going to have it. What, what we're going to have. What, is, is it going to be fried turkey? Or is it going to be uh, baked turkey? Uh, uh, you know, roasted turkey, uh, and then this is the point. This is the most important question you ask. You say, "Who gonna cook it?" You understand? Know and so, so we we already on in Thanksgiving, but I will pay my vows unto the Lord. You know, you gotta pay your vows. You, you make vows in your marriage. You make vows. Uh, you, you tell God anytime you tell God you're going to do something, it's a vow. You know, you say, Lord, you say, Lord, 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 I'm going to do better. Well, that's a vow, and you need to pay it. Do better. Do better. You know. And I'm going to say it. Just be a, a good dude. Just be, just be a, a, a good woman. A virtuous woman. Do better. Do 
better. I, and I offer to him thanksgiving, you know, for, 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 you know, a costly gift. Uh, you know, a costly gift. Thank him for a costly gift. His blood. He died for us. And, you know, we wouldn't even die for our brothers and sisters. We wouldn't die for them. We wouldn't die for him. We we wouldn't take the punishment for them. We wouldn't we wouldn't let the uh we we you know we couldn't fight it, but we wouldn't let we wouldn't understand our mother or father whipping us because my brother or sister made a mistake. We wouldn't understand it. But God died for us while we were still out there making mistakes. He died for us. He took our punishment. That's called mercy. He took our punishment and, and then gave us something. Gave us salvation. And so Sacrifice of thanksgiving may not seem a very costly gift, but it's, it's pleasing unto God. It's pleasing unto God. I think Hebrews 13 and uh, 15, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. To God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. That, that sums it all up. You know, offer sacrifice to of praise to God continually. Always thank God. Thank him in the morning. Thank him in the noon day. And thank him in the evening. And let the fruits of our lips give thanks unto his name. Give your best. That, that's what I'm saying. What, what shall I render? Give, give your best. Because he gave his best for us. God bless you. We, we, we're going to pray now. We're going to pray now, and, and uh, we know that God has given us benefits, and uh, he has given us the privilege to render unto him some things, and we, we thank God for the privilege. Let's, let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and for the salvation that we have received through trusting in his death on the cross and his resurrection. Our hearts overflow with, with grateful thanks and praise for his amazing sacrifice for sin. Thank you that we that he sent that he was sent to pay the price for our sins and the sins of the whole world. We simply want to live in him and be rooted in him. We pray that we may grow in grace, mature in the faith, and find strength in him. We pray that we may grow in grace, mature in the faith, and find strength in him. There is no greater blessing that you could have given us than the precious life of your only begotten son. 
so that in him, in him, we may be redeemed from death and hell and receive forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. I pray that we may live our life in a manner that glorifies you. We just thank you. We thank you, Father, for your amazing gift of salvation and pray that many who have not accepted Jesus as their Savior may do so before it's too late. This we ask in your dear name's sake. Amen. Thank you again for viewing us. Thank you for letting us, uh, our sanctuary, come into your sanctuary. Once again, uh, if, if you don't know Christ, accept him in your life. And you'll see the benefits. And then you too will say, what can I render unto him for all his benefits towards me? You'll say that. Email me uh, on uh, the email that's on the screen. And, and we will follow up with you. But you can email me and say, I want to accept Jesus. And, and, and we will follow up with you. But you can accept Jesus right now in your living room. And, and you can email me and, 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 and I will follow up with you and... Uh, uh, and also uh, get uh, you in a, a learning atmosphere so you can grow in Christ. We'll do that fight. Not only will we uh, accept you into the family of Christ, but we'll walk with you. So we thank you once again. And you have the victory, the V. You have victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now see you sooner than later. And hey, stay safe, sanitized, and biblically sound in mind and spirit. May the Lord Bless you real.